So here's the deal. I'm here in my workshop and every day come lunchtime, I have to go to the grocery store to buy lunch. Now the grocery store is not that far away. It's only like four, 500 meters. But walking there and back every day does get kind of boring. So I want something to speed up that process. Now I do have this skateboard deck here. And while I could just throw on some trucks and use this thing to get to the store, there's a problem with that. I suck at skateboarding and I would probably hurt myself. And then I remembered that I have these old scooter wheels here. So I thought, why not turn this skateboard deck into a scooter? Which I'm sure you skateboard guys out there will appreciate. And to make that process easy for myself, I figured why not just use 3D printing, print out some parts, throw it together, and I'll have a scooter in no time. Fast forward a week later, and a bin full of failed printed parts, I realized that this thing turned into a bit more of a complicated project than I initially thought. But, and I now think that I 3D printed all the parts that I'll need to turn this skateboard deck into a scooter. Oh, and by the way, I intend on turning it into an electric scooter using this drill as the motor. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Let's get started building. So as you can see, there's a lot of different 3D printer parts here. And these are actually most of the parts that we'll need in order to build our scooter. Together with a couple of off-the-shelf nuts and bolts and a few pieces from the hardware store. More on these later. But there's one piece that we still need to make that I can't print or buy. You see, this scooter is gonna go together much like a regular scooter. The front fork is gonna have the front wheel attached with a couple of bearings and a shaft in the middle. But because I wanna be able to drive this front wheel with a drill, I need a special shaft that can transfer the power from the drill into the front wheel. And that's the part that we still need to make. All right, so we're over here at the lathe. I've cut myself a little piece of material that we're gonna put in the chuck here. And then using this drawing, we'll turn this piece of metal into our front axle. So we've done some turning. This is definitely not my best work, but we've now got two surfaces that will hold a bearing relatively snugly. As you can see, there's two different sizes and types of bearings, but we'll talk about these in just a second. Next step now is to put some threads at the end and then we'll flip it around and do basically the same thing all over again. Ready for side number two. Okay, we've got our shaft, but before we go any further, let's quickly have a look at what this thing actually needs to do. So you see, normally on a regular scooter wheel, you can put a shaft through these bearings and it will spin, which is great. But we want to be able to drive this thing with a drill. So we need the shaft in the middle to be connected to the wheel so that when we drive it, the front wheel also spins. But that leaves us with one challenge. You see, on a regular electric scooter, when you let go of the gas, it will still roll. It will break a little bit, but it will still roll. But this thing, however, when you let go of the gas, it just stops. And that would be a bad experience because that would mean it would lock up the front wheel as soon as you let go. So I needed a way to have this shaft connect to the front wheel, but still have it spin freely when you let go of the gas on the drill. And what I've come up with is to use this one-way bearing. And these things are really cool. Quickly, this is how they work. There's a little arrow on there indicating that this is the way this bearing can roll. But if I try to roll it the other way, it won't, it breaks. So it only rolls one way, which is really cool because if I mount it inside the front wheel, I can use the braking side to drive it with my drill and I can use the free spinning side to make sure it doesn't break if I let go of the gas here. And now back to the shaft. So this big shoulder here is turned to the right size to fit this bearing. And this bearing has a keyway here so we can lock the rotation of the shaft to the bearing. So I'm gonna drill and tap a hole in here and then insert a screw so that should lock them together sufficiently. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Look, it works. And yes, I could have used my newly restored vise or my fancy milling machine, but this worked, didn't it? The last thing I need to do to this thing is that I want to be able to drive it with this angle attachment for the drill. So I need this shaft to attach to the inside of this thing. And I'm just going to file a hex, just like on the back side here, so it goes into the hex hole there. And ta-da, now we have a hex at the end. And yes, I could use the fancy machine for this as well, but filing worked just great. This thing now fits in here. It even locks in place. That wasn't intentional, but I'm not complaining. So to get this big bearing inside of this wheel, I want to replace the center section of it with this 3D printer part. So I'm going to cut this out and then install this instead. Okay, the center is gone and this part fits perfectly. I'll glue it in place just to make sure. Now while we wait for the glue to dry on the front wheel, it's time to start assembling some of these pieces. And the only thing in terms of prep work that we need to do here is that this part has a little extra lip on it that we need to remove. And that lip is there just because I printed it standing up like this, so it was a little bit more extra surface area to attach to the build plate. So I'll just remove this and then it's time for assembly. I know I've said that it's time for assembly a lot of times already. Okay, so I've had to massage the inside of this thing a little bit with some sandpaper to get this part to fit properly and slide freely without a problem. So these two pieces attach together with these printed threads at the top. And these are printed with the left hand thread so that when I screw them together, I can use a normal bolt which has a right hand thread going into the hole up here which goes into this nut up there. And when I tighten the screw now, those two threads should counteract and make sure that this part doesn't come undone. But of course, this goes inside of there. And to make sure that these two pieces spin smoothly and can take the load of my entire body, I'm actually gonna use one of these bearings here. And this bearing comes out of the part of a bicycle where the frame attaches to the fork. So I'm gonna press in this bearing on the bottom here and then this part can spin freely on top of there. Whee! Now this goes on here, and like I said, that goes in there. Haha! -ha! Okay, back to the front wheel. The front wheel is dry. It's now time to attach our fancy one-way bearing. And this is the time where you don't want to screw up the direction you put this thing in. So we'll just tap this in lightly and to make sure that this doesn't rotate inside of the plastic, before I glued it, I put in this little captive nut with a little set screw that I can tighten onto this keyway here. And then we'll do the same thing with the regular bearing on the other side here. And then we'll attach everything together. I also made this little spacer piece that will go in there. Okay, and now somehow trying to assemble all of this in the right order. First step, bearing. For good measure, a second one. Spacer, which is gonna go in here. Wheel, just gonna go like that. Fancy shaft that we just made. Hopefully through everything somehow. Ooh. And hopefully that key can align properly to go in there. Another bearing. Second bearing. <laughs> I was wondering why the ratchet wasn't making the ratchet sound, but the one-way bearing is acting like the ratchet mechanism. <laughs> and on this side, it's acting against me. Great. Okay, it spins. That's a good sign. Let's test this. I hope this works. <laughs> I wonder how 
fast this thing is gonna go. Okay, that's very promising. I think the next step is to take the skateboard deck and turn this thing into a scooter deck. <laughs> skateboard deck suddenly is a scooter deck. Now it's time to attach the wheels. The front wheel will actually mount into the same holes that the skateboard uses for the trucks. The back wheel will be mounted in this bracket, which will match up with a hole that I cut in the back of the skateboard here. to look like a scooter. Not sure if that's a good thing, but it is. It feels a little flexible. Oh well, <laughs> we'll deal with that later. Next step is we need a rod here to go to the steering wheel. Steering wheel? <laughs> and for that, we'll just use a broomstick. This thing is still too long, so we need to cut it to a proper length. Ready? Okay. All right, now this thing will go in the top here, and this part I'm kind of proud of. So in order to attach this securely, there's threads at the top here, and a 3D printed little nut that will go on there. And then when I tighten this, it will tighten the piece underneath. And now this thing is securely mounted. Pretty cool, huh? Now, and for the handlebars, we've got this piece, which has the same exact threads as on the inside of here. And we'll use the leftover piece of our broomstick and stick it on there. But now before we attach this to the other side, there's actually two small holes in there and we'll put some screws in there so that the handlebars don't come off once everything is assembled. Okay. Now, not on first, this thing. Let me cut this off. <laughs> Look at this thing! <laughs> Isn't this cute? <laughs> okay, let's try it out. Ah! <laughs> I mean, it works. There's just one thing I did not anticipate at all, and that is how crazy flexible this thing is. Now, I was afraid of these plastic parts being strong enough because they're just printed in regular old-fashioned PLA. But it turns out the board is just super, super flexible. So I'll definitely have to figure out some good solution to make it a little bit more stiffer. But in the meantime, let's assemble the rest of this thing and see if we can make it motorized. F Subscribe. Ah! No! Ah! Well, I guess I now know where that skateboard deck was broken. So I can obviously not use this thing anymore, so I have to use another skateboard deck and hope that that is stronger. Probably not this one. Let's try this again. Let's try. Ah! 
I wouldn't mind it being a little bit stiffer. I made this a centimeter wider, so I think that helps. Also, this board had more of a curvature to it to begin with, which I also think helps. Again, we're gonna leave this for now. We'll figure out something to make it stiffer later. But now let's see if we can mount a motor to this. So onto the motor for this thing, which still is a drill. We'll need to take off the steering wheel here. And then I've printed this funny looking bracket thing, which will slide onto here. And then we can <laughs> cut them in. So we'll just put this piece here back on. And now, the drill should go in, <laughs> in there somewhere. But first, we need to attach this angle attachment thingy to the side here. And to keep it in place, I've 3D printed this little bracket, which fits onto this thing fairly snugly. And then this whole thing attaches to the side here into a couple of holes that I've already drilled and tapped. Right, now, next step is that we need some way of getting from there all the way up to the top of the handlebars. And I found a couple of these drill extenders that will put on top of here, one on top of the other. Ah, you see where this is going? And now this rod comes out of the top here, which means that we can connect it to the drill here so that it can do that, tighten this. So we still need some way of triggering the trigger of the drill. And I'm gonna take a piece of string and I'm gonna thread that string through this tube. It's gonna go through this hole, with a little knot at the end. This thing goes in here, a little bit of Velcro. And in theory now, if I pull on the string, the drill should spin. <laughs> So now that this is working, and we've got that string coming up there, we'll put this sleeve on there, and there's a little hole there for a screw. So now that this thing can't rotate, I've printed this little handle, which can rotate, and this little end cap that threads in at the end here. You see where this is going? This goes in here, tie off and knot here. That thing goes in there. <laughs> All right, let's connect everything up and then let's try it. This is how this is gonna work. This thing goes in there. You just need to tighten it. Velcro attaches this thing so it doesn't spin. <laughs> and now it should work. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Enough torque, at least. <laughs> ah, the board is way too flexible, but I also think that the drill is way too powerful. I'm in first gear now, and it's just crazy fast. It doesn't really have like a smooth acceleration. It's just full power. The board here is definitely still way too soft. It hasn't broken yet, but I don't want to take any chances. So we need to figure out something to fix that first. Other than that, other than seemingly being way overpowered, this works. <laughs> okay, let's try and fix this. All right, so after spending a little bit of time trying to figure out a way to make this thing a little bit stiffer, I think I've got a solution. And that solution is to mount a steel tube to the bottom side of the skateboard deck here. And I'm gonna mount this thing with these two 3D printed holders. And these holders with their four holes on either side are gonna mount into the original locations where the trucks were mounted to the skateboard. Okay, let's try this thing out again. Hopefully this helps. <laughs> this worked really well. That really did the trick. It's super stiff now, like I can't feel any flex in it. I think it looks pretty good as well. I also added these two stabilizer thingies just so it would have more contact 
with the bottom of the board. Oh, but now to the real test. Drill goes in there, Velcro. Ah. And so far I've only been driving it in first gear. This has way more torque than I thought. I mean, I think we should just take it outside and try it there. Okay, first test outside. Let's try. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> this works way too well. Okay, that was first gear. Let's try second. Whee! <laughs> I mean, it works. <laughs> it's definitely, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is definitely pretty sketchy. I mean, there's no brake. Uh, on second gear, the motor cuts out if you give it too much throttle at once. And the whole steering wheel kind of twists from the torque of the drill. But it's an electric scooter powered by a drill built off a skateboard and with a bunch of 3D printer parts. So, I mean, I'm happy. <laughs> I can't believe this actually worked. Even though this broomstick probably is quite a bit too flexible to be safe in the long run, and the whole thing twists from the torque of the drill, but it works. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I sure had a lot of fun building it. If you did enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a huge difference if you do. And if you're not yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. And as for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna go ride this thing a bit more. And while I do that, maybe you guys can check out one of my older videos. Bye bye. Ha 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 